When you save your document to the OneDrive, which is a server provided by Microsoft, also known as the cloud, you can access those files from anywhere and share with anyone with internet connection, and also co-author or collaborate on the documents at the same time. And in order to use the service, we have to sign up for it. And we can do that by coming up here and clicking on the File tab. And let's go down to Save As. And there's the OneDrive. So instead of saving it to this PC, we can save it to the cloud, which over here gives the explanation that once you save it to this mysterious cloud, which is nothing more than a computer called a server, but now called the cloud, you can access it from, well, anywhere there's internet connection to any one of your devices. So if you don't have a Windows Live ID account, you can go ahead and click on Sign Up. And you can sign up for free. Well, actually, if you want to do it for the business, they have plans and pricing. But if it's just you, you want access to the OneDrive, well, go ahead and click on Create a Microsoft Account. But it says if you use Outlook.com or Xbox Live, you already have a Microsoft account, so you can use that to sign in. And you can sign in via the web, just, you know, sign in now. Or you can go ahead and sign in through your Microsoft Word program to save your documents and also view them that are on the cloud. So let's go ahead and click on Create a Microsoft Account. Well, before you go ahead and start giving them all your information, like your email address and password, you may want to make sure you're okie dokie with their service agreement, privacies, and cookie statement. And then go ahead and continue on. After you get that signed up, let's close out, come back here. And then when you want to save this document, to the cloud so you can tell Bob or Susie who lives in another country to access that and collaborate with you on it. Well, we're going to go ahead. As it is, save as to the OneDrive. Let's sign in. Email address that you use to sign up for your Windows Live ID account. Hit the Enter key on the keyboard so it can advance to the next window for your password. And then hit Enter again and you're connected. How do you know? Well, first off up here on the title bar, that area, you got a bunch of lines and arrows going, hey, you're all over the place. You're throughout the world and you're connected everywhere. Or anywhere there's internet connection, you can access this document and also share it with others. And then also you can see that, hey, Kurt is signed in. Fabulous. You can click on that to get more options. You got account settings, which can also be found down below backstage in the navigation pane. So when you click on account settings, it takes you right to the account and that it says, if you want to sign out, go ahead because you're signed in. We won't do that. Let's go back to Save As because I want to save this document, not to my computer, but to the OneDrive. So after I signed in, then let's go to the OneDrive and click, well, it's having a hard time refreshing. It says it wants me to sign in again. But let's go ahead and go back out. Give it a second to refresh. Click on File, then go back to Save As, and then do, there we go, it's updated. You see OneDrive, it's got my email address that I log into. Go ahead and select it, and there we go. I can save it to my OneDrive folder here. Let's go ahead and click on it to open it up, and we've got folders we can save it in. My basic documents folder or email attachments. Let's save it to my documents folder, so let's go ahead and double click to open that up. And in that folder, oh, I already have the document co-author OneDrive right there. Well, that's okay. I can either overwrite it, or if this is going to be another document entirely, or I want another one to work on, same document, but with a different name, that's fine. Let's go ahead and type in poem, because it is a poem, or a poem, and then click Save, and it will load it up. Cool. Takes me to the front stage, and then down below, if you want to rewind the video, it's got a little bar that says it's uploaded, or uploading to the OneDrive. And then any changes that you make in here, it'll automatically save those changes. So if I come over here and add an exclamation point, come up here, and when I click on the Save button, hey, what's different about that Save button? It's got a couple of green arrows turning in on themselves that you can see when I hover over it. It says in the pop-up, you can save this document, and also it'll refresh it with the updates made by the others. So it's a Save slash Refresh button. So if anybody else opens this up, well, first I have to share it with them, but if they open it up at the same time I'm working on it, then when I make my changes and I click Save, it'll upload it to the cloud. And then at the same time, any changes they make, when I click Save, it's also Refresh. It pulls in and refreshes my document with the changes that are made by the other user or users. So speaking of which, do we want to share this with somebody else? Of course, we're very sharesies. So let's come over here. 
and click on the share tab. Oh, that was convenient. And so it connects so it finds out if we're sharing it with anybody currently. And if we were, it would show it down below here. In any case, who do we want to invite? Well, do you have Microsoft Outlook 2016? If you do, you can go ahead and click on the address book and it pulls in the contacts from Outlook. And we can share it with Carrie. Go ahead and double click to add her down to the to field and then click okie dokie. Or you can go ahead and type in their email address. That works. And then what permissions do you want to give her? Can she edit the document or just view it? Let's have her edit. And then we can include a message. It's optional, but we can type in something that when we send this off to her, she'll know the reason why we're sending this to her. Please take a gander and update my poem with any brilliant suggestions you have. Happy face. And when you're ready, we can go ahead and click on share. Now before I do that, down below it says you can automatically share changes. The defaults ask me. What that means is that when she logs in after I share it with her at the same time that I'm in there, well, any changes I make can be done always automatically as opposed to me having to, you know, come up here and click on refresh to be able to pull in those changes or where it says ask me. So let's just go ahead and click share and leave it as ask me. And you can see that it sent off the email and then it updates the task pane over here that says we're sharing with Carrie where she can edit it. And if you want to update that, you can right click on it and say either remove the user, in which case when she gets the email, she won't be able to view it. Or you can change the permissions to where she can only view it but can't make any changes to it. We'll leave it as is and then ask Carrie to go ahead and log in so we can see what it looks like when I'm working on it at the same time she is. Now keep in mind when she gets the email, she can actually view the document, the contents, and in which case there's no harm in that. It won't show that she's logged in, but the moment she wants to make any changes to it, she has to have a Windows Live ID account to log in to make changes. That way, it's a little bit more secure, but also it can tag her and show her as part of the collaborating group to say that, hey, she's actually working here live or right now. So let's go ahead and have her sign in. She can already view it, but once she signs in, then she can edit it or make changes to it. And there you go. Up here, it tells you Carrie Heffern is signed in, and then it pops open. It says, other people are editing this document. Do you want to automatically share changes as they happen? Well, new to Word 2016 is this cool little feature that if you choose yes, it'll actually put a little tag wherever their cursor's at in the document. So if Carrie is down here next to where they, with her cursor there, it will actually put a little flag there that lets me know she's working right there, or that's where her cursor's at. It doesn't mean that she's working there. She could be clicking down here to look up here in any case, but that's where the cursor's at. If I say no, then any changes that I make and that she makes, I have to come up here and click on the Save Refresh. So I make some changes, click Save, and then in the meantime, any changes she makes, it refreshes it and pulls in her changes. So how about if we go ahead and say yes, so we can see where she's at, her cursor that is, with the flag. That will indicate it over here in the document after it updates it. And you can see over here, she's editing in real time. Oh, that's so tinsel. And there you go. Well, let me go ahead and close out of here. So you can see it, there's the flag. You can see when I hover over it, that's Carrie. Cool. She's got her cursor right there. So, hey, I'll leave that place alone. She can make changes to it. But if at any time I make a change at the same time she does, and there's that lag time with the Internet, you'll actually get a pop-up window that says, um, there's a conflict here, so you need to resolve it. You made this change. She made that change. Which one do you want to accept and reject? And you can watch my accept and reject training videos because it's the same thing. In any case, Let's go ahead and have her make changes to the document here, like changing streaks to breaks. And then because it's in automatic mode, well, there's that lag time, so I may have to wait two seconds. But in any case, that was pretty quick. It updated it, and there's the flag. And, well, I don't like it so close to the other words, so I can hit the space bar, and it says you can't make this change because the selection is locked. You see that down below in the status bar? Because Carrie Heffernan's in this paragraph, it doesn't want to have conflicts. But if you wait long enough, because it's an automatic mode, with the sync time between Word and the cloud, it'll figure out that Carrie's not doing anything right now, so it'll open it up and allow me to make the change. 
Now let's go ahead and have carry log out, and I'll log out, and close out of here. We'll have her log out first, so we can see that oh, she's no longer editing this document. Click the share button to see who's still here. Woohoo! Who's still here? Refresh, and nobody else. It's just me because, well, I haven't shared it with anybody else. Speaking of which, if I want to share it with others, and I don't want to go through, well, via email, because maybe there's hundreds of people I want to share it with, and I don't want to go through a bunch of emails, and I'd rather post it as a link where people can go ahead and either click on or send it off to somebody and they can share it with everybody else. In any case, you can come down below and click on Get a Sharing Link. Click on that. And you can have either create a link to edit, so anyone with this link can edit the documents, and also the other one, which is just to view or read only. So click on it to create a link. You can copy it, go ahead and paste it, and email send it off. You can create one to just view only, copy that, send it off in an email, and then you can come back up here, click on the arrow to go back, and you can see it's with Carrie, and anyone with this link can view it. You can right click on it to copy it again. Or you can disable it, in which case it will remove it. Right click and remove it. And anybody who has those links, when they click on it, well, I'll show you in a minute, but basically it'll say, uh, the item's no longer available or not here. Something very polite and not like, hey, they just disconnected you because that's a little bit too harsh. And so when I'm done, I can come up here and click on the file tab, go backstage, go down to close, close out of it. And well, there's the original document that I had on my computer that I saved it under a new name onto the OneDrive called Poem. And if I want to go ahead and open the one on the OneDrive, well, I can do it one of a couple of ways. One way is to open up Word again. Let's go ahead and double click and go backstage file. And instead of save as, we want to open. And what do we want to open? It's what's on the OneDrive. Let's go ahead and select it. And well, there you go. There's the OneDrive personal folder, and within that folder we have our documents folder. Go ahead and click on that, and in that folder we have our poem. Yay! Let's go ahead and click on it to open it back up. And Carrie's back in. Okay, Carrie Heffernan is editing this document, and then we get that choice again. Do you want to automatically share changes as they happen? If I say no, then I'm at the mercy of the Save Refresh button. So, well, any changes I make where I say, well, let me get rid of that. And you can see it gives me a little outline right there. Well, that means to me that I'm working that paragraph. And Carrie will see that on her end, letting her know that, well, you probably better not work in that same paragraph that I'm working on so we can avoid conflicts. I mean, if there are conflicts, you'll get a pop-up window that says, hey, you got to resolve this. Which one do you want? Do you want to accept her change or stick with yours? And it's the same thing, basically, as you saw in my accept and reject training video on changes. And let's go ahead and have Carrie make changes before we come up here and click Save and Refresh. And once the changes are available, the ones that she made, you can see down below in the status bar, hey, updates are available. Go ahead and click on the Save Refresh button. So let's come up here, click on Save Refresh. Um, it tells us that when you save, Word updates your document with changes made by others. You can easily find the new content by looking for a green overlay, which, well, when I click on it, I don't see the overlay. So that may be a bug or something going on with my Word document. In any case, hopefully it works for you. And so we had her change the word here to desperate plight instead of flight. And then again, at any one time, if you want to be done with sharing, you can come up here, click on the Share tab. And we can go ahead, when you hover over it, you can send her an email, but right-click on her, and you can remove her so she no longer has access to view or edit or just say that you want to allow her just to view. And then when I right click again, you can see that it went from view to now where she can go ahead and edit it. Now you can do it that way or the other way that I was going to show you is let me go ahead and close out of here. You can open up Internet Explorer and actually go to the site itself, the SkyDrive, which is called One, well there you go, OneDrive.com. Hit enter. It's like going backstage into Word, and instead of signing up for free, when you click on that you want to sign up, you can just come up here and click on Sign In. And there's my email. Click Next. Type in my password, and then hit Enter. And there's the layout for the OneDrive, the cloud. And you can see here we've got two tiles. We have one that contains 11 documents. Let's go ahead and click on that to see what's in there. And scroll down. Hey, there's my poem. Great. 
you can go ahead and right click on that to get a bunch of options in the shortcut menu I can share it click on share and I can get a link or send it as an email and you can see it says anyone with this link can edit this item you can click on the link here to uncheck allow editing so anyone with this link can only view the item so you can get the link for viewing purposes only or read only and also email you can click on more and you can go ahead and share this on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Sina Weibo. And you can click on Manage Permissions. That opens up the information bar over to the right. And so with the document, as we saw in Microsoft Word, that it was just Carrie that I was sharing with. And right now she can edit it. And of course I can add additional people here. So this is the way that you do it online as opposed to doing it in Microsoft Word. But it's basically the same task pane that opens up to the far right that you can go ahead and click on to make changes and even send an email to everyone that you're sharing to. Click on that. And if you have Microsoft Outlook 2016, you can say allow. Opens it up, copies in. Well, it's just her, so her email address. But then I can go ahead and send it off and say, hey, look, I'm going to shut her down. So go ahead and make whatever changes you want. We're just about done. Let me go ahead and close out and say no. And then when you're done, you can go ahead and click on the I to collapse it. And you can click on it again to expand it. And what is it looking at? Well, whatever we have selected here that you can go ahead when you hover over one of the tiles to check. So now I have it applying to both. And so when I have both checked, you can come up here and look on the toolbar, as it were. And with the two selected, I can copy to, move to, delete, download, or share those two with others. Or if I just want to focus on the one, uncheck the one and just have that for the options there. Or again, you can right click and get the option list here. Even the details, which opens up the information pane again. We can go ahead and click on the I to collapse it. And then if you want to work on it here, well, why not? Go ahead and click on it to open it up. And it's, oh my word, it's online. Isn't that cool? And oh, there you go. We got Carrie. She's also in there editing the document. So that's how it looks when you're doing it online. And so with online Word, you get quite a bit of the functionality, but not completely as you would with you editing the document within Word itself on your computer. So you get the option to edit in Word to get more functionality or the complete functionality available in Word. So make whatever changes you can here. And if it's not enough, click on Edit in Word. Go ahead and say yes, allow, and it opens it up, and we're back to where we were. Carrie's editing this document. Do you want to go ahead and have automatic sharing as we go? You can say yes, and then she gets the flag, and we're coming full circles here. So you get two choices. Either go ahead and do it within Microsoft Word off of your computer to talk back and forth between the cloud, or go ahead and log into OneDrive.com and make all your changes and updates there which is pretty cool because if you're on a computer that doesn't have Word, at least you get some basic functionality. If you can connect, like you're at the library, and you're like, oh, I need to go ahead and work on something on the OneDrive, but they don't have Microsoft Office installed on that computer, well, no worries. At least you get the basic functionality through the OneDrive. Oh, and then if you want to go ahead and log out because you're done, well, you can do it one of a couple of ways. Again, come up here, click on your name, if it's under your name. Go to Account Settings or just go Backstage File, down to Account, and it takes you to the same tab here, the Account Settings, and we'll come here and just go ahead and click Sign Out. And then it warns you, hey, if you remove this, you get a lot of customizations that were set that are going to be lost, and you won't be able to sync to the server until you sign back in. Are you okay with this? Yes. And then it gets rid of the cyborg lines here that let you know that you're connected to everybody else or through the cloud to anybody that you want to share with over the Internet. And then, of course, you can go ahead and sign back in here. Or, you know, when you go ahead and you open up a document from the OneDrive, you need to sign in or save as OneDrive Sign In. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.